So, okay, so how are we, how we going to solve this? Okay, so I guess the first thing to do is if you look at the table you have at the bottom, it tells us what the truth tables are for AND and XOR. Okay? So we know that Boolean functions can all be represented as combinations of AND, OR, and NOT. So I'm going to recommend that you fill out that empty column you have with OR. All right, so OR is like that. Right, and you'll notice if you look at AND, OR, and XOR, that OR looks just like XOR except at the very last row. In the second, okay, good, uh -huh. and in that row. Right, and AND, on the other hand, tells us a 1 only on the last row. So what I'm going to suggest that we really want that last node to do in your drawing is to compute the OR of X1 or X2 and produce the right answer, except in the case of the last row, which we only want to turn off when AND happens to be true. So really what that node is is computing OR minus AND. All right, so how do we make this OR minus AND? So the way we did OR before, well, we did it a couple different ways, but one is we, we gave w uh, weights of 1 on the two inputs and then a threshold of 1. And that made, you know, ignoring everything else at the moment, this unit will now turn on if either X1 or X2 are on, and otherwise it'll stay off. Right. So what's the worst case? The lowest value that you can get is when one of those is 1 and one of those is 0, which means that the sum into those will be, in fact, 1. Yeah. Right? So if the AND comes out as being true, it's going to give us some positive value. So if we just simply have a negative weight there, that will subtract out exactly in the case when AND is on. That's not going to quite give us the answer we want, but it's a good place to start to think about it. All right, so like just a negative weight, like negative 1? Mm-hmm. All right, so does that work? Not quite. All right, and wh why doesn't it work? Because if, well, certainly when AND is off, then we really are just getting the OR. That's all good. But if yep. both X1 and X2 are both on, then the sum here is going to be 2 minus the 1 that we get from the AND, which is still 1. So minus 1 isn't enough. Minus 1, but maybe we can do more than that. Maybe we can do minus 2. What happens if we do minus 2? Then we've got X1 and X2, if they're both on, then we get a sum of 1 minus 2 plus 1, or 0, which is less than our threshold, so it will output 0. And in the other two cases, right, when AND is off, then it just acts like OR. So this actually kind of does the right thing. It's, it's actually OR minus kind of AND times 2. <laughs> right. And there you go. And, of course, there's an infinite number of solutions for this.